Hello, hello, welcome back. Hope you're having a nice weekend and an awesome Saturday. Uh, Qualcomm is a company that I wanted to make a video about quite, for quite some time now and it was also suggested uh, pretty much today from one of our viewers and so I thought okay maybe it's a good opportunity especially since it's going down and I'll be making more videos today but I think I'm gonna be starting with this one because it um, this company is extremely interesting right now and uh, as you see it has gone down 31%. If you take a look at the five-year chart, you will see that it has been growing, yet in the last few, I guess, months or so, it has been going down. It used to be like 188 in the, at this level. Its one-year high has been 193. That was the top one, the top level. And um, right now it's sitting at 132.81 here. So interesting. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. And uh, if you are not a subscriber for a while now at this channel, you may want to become now because on Monday I'm actually opening up this tool for uh, subscribers and viewers who are interested. And I will let you know how to get access so you may want to be around for when that happens. In the meantime, please remember to also leave a like if you enjoy this kind of uh, video. And thanks a lot for being around. Awesome. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. Now, before I do my usual analysis here, I can't help uh, but notice something. It's the first thing that I see and I'm going to take you through the process how I actually examine stocks before actually even making the video. And this is when, what my eye fell on. Um, it's uh, this thing, five year total equity growth. You will see that it's down 67.6% uh, here. It used to be 30 billion. And I was surprised seeing that. I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't remember, I don't know anything that has happened, everything that has happened with any company. And so I'm seeing this uh, insane decrease here in terms of equity for, of the company, in terms of total equity. And I'm wondering how did that happen? And so this, uh, this kind of gives me a sort of like an alert, and which I need to, to research. And this is exactly what I did, and this is what I found way 2017 was a year to forget for Qualcomm and if you actually read through the article this is not obviously the the point of the video you will see that um, the other issues were solvable simply by writing a check on the 37.3 billion in cash and marketable securities on Qualcomm's balance sheet so this is why they lost a lot of a ton of their uh, total equity here they had a massive issue in terms of fines and things that they have to they had to deal with back in 2017 really really uh, annihilated the company's balance sheet back then so it's really worth noting that uh, this is why you are looking at the balance sheet that has been going down and then all of a sudden uh, kind of creeping up again so worth noting for sure now let's take a look at the financials because we're not buying the company in 2017 we're buying the company today but it's always worth wo noting and knowing what happened in the past of the company so the P ratio is sitting at 15 and it has been 30, it has been over here, you will see 27. So it's sitting at a very, very nice uh, value right now. I like to see 15.2, of course. And the price to free cash flow ratio also pretty nice, 20.1, marginally red. This will give you a green if it's uh, less than 20, uh, this specific one. But it doesn't mean that if you get an exit, it's automatically uh, a rejection, of course not. This is a, this is kind of pictures the whole story and we will examine the stock evaluation tool, which is uh, the, at the end the most important thing really. This kind of gives us uh, the, the green light or the red light and then we can kind of go to our stock evaluation tool and find the details about uh, how much to pay. Now the outstanding shares have been going down tremendously, company has been buying back shares, another great great thing to see. A lot of outstanding shares have been converting have been converted to treasury stock pretty much not getting uh, traded, not getting uh, active uh, investors right now, meaning that uh, if you hold the shares, if you have been holding shares uh, since uh, 2017, 18, 19 and so, you have actually intrinsically increased the value of your position because there are less shares in the market. So that's a good thing. The free cash flow to total liabilities points to a company that requires um, 3.6 years of last year's free cash flow to pay back all their total liabilities if they wanted to. Of course, they're not going to do that, but it gives us a, a meaning, a way to actually know how solvent the company is, how much debt they have. The five-year revenue growth, the company is still growing pretty nicely, even though it's a pretty large company. So that's nice to see. Also pretty great uh, net income growth uh, again. Uh, it's 2018 that it was a bad year for them, but after that, they have been doing pretty well, increasing their um, free cash flow, increasing their net income pretty much year over year. So that's good stuff. Now, 
the debt to equity ratio is slightly elevated. I'm not really that concerned uh, about uh, debt when the companies make uh, good uh, free cash flow, unless it's an insane amount of debt, of course. Yet uh, remember that the free cash flow to total liabilities is actually uh, easy to serve for the company. The debt to equity ratio is basically elevated here because of what we discussed earlier, the total equity growth. And so you can understand that uh, you can kind of see all this and pretty much picture the whole story of what's going on with the financials of the company. That's uh, very, very uh, awesome to, to have here in uh, pretty much one page. And um, you can see that this debt to equity ratio is practically speaking not really a, a risk at all. Because again, the company has enough free cash flow to pay total liabilities in like three years, which is amazing actually. And also they have lost equity because of what we discussed back in 2018, 17, sorry. And so yeah, this number here, it doesn't concern me at all for these reasons. Now pretty great uh, net income margins here, pretty great uh, return on capital employed and equity. So yeah, that uh, looks amazing. And I also have the dividend yield here, which is uh, convenient to see because the company is paying a little bit of dividend. Notice that it has been going down, but uh, right now the dividend payout ratio is at 36% and uh, the dividend payout ratio in terms of net income, this is free cash flow, is at uh, uh, 31%. Typically you see most software having this line payout ratio, which uh, actually refers to net income. Yet net income can be uh, massively transformed and can be massively cooked sort of in a legal way, of course, to, um, uh, to a point that it can actually really, really skew your payout ratio, typically upwards. And so you need to be using uh, the free cash flow dividend payout ratio pretty much because this actually accounts for the free cash flow that the company is generating and the company is actually paying their dividends from their free cash flow. Uh, it's not really their net income. And so this is why this value makes more sense uh, to me and this is why I have added it to the tool. I have both of these if you want to consult both. But this is what I pay, mostly pay attention at. Now, 36% uh, is pretty great. Uh, anything below 50 is very, very easy to um, uh, serve for the company. And so I don't have any concerns about this. Now, of course, we examined, we kind of already examined and we know the story from the balance sheet of the company and the income statement uh, follows next. Uh, the revenue is going, as you see here, has been increasing pretty nicely. They have had uh, 2018 being a relatively bad year for them. This is a massive company, big company. It will have some down years. Uh, that's unavoidable. But overall, it uh, gets increased. At all, so that's good. It's increasing. And uh, the net income is also increasing. Uh, this was a bad, very bad year for them, of course, again. 2018 but after that they have been doing better and better the balance sheet is what i told you about earlier look at this uh, is the cash and cash equivalents that actually was uh, transformed back in 2017 because they, ha they had to pay a lot of it and uh, yeah they went down quite some uh, because of this and then they started uh, you know creeping up a little bit higher in terms of their assets if you take a look at their total equity look at this 30 billion back in th 2017 and after the, the things happened uh, a billion later and then again they start it starts creeping up higher with uh, 2019 being a fantastic year at almost 400 percent high a little bit more so again you can kind of see a story and i have laid out all the information here to make sense uh, for uh, you know for analysis because you can basically see the total current assets uh, breakdown in full cash equivalents short-term investments if you add this together you're going to get this value same thing with the non-current assets current liabilities non-current liabilities yeah, I have I have actually created the tool in a way that actually helps me so that it will help others because that's exactly how I would like to see my data here pretty much in one in one in one place where I can actually see the whole uh, how, how they are calculated exactly pretty much from all the numbers and yeah, uh, total assets, total liabilities and total equity pretty much everything making sense. Now the cash flow statement again, same story. You will see here that uh, it's, all, it's all a breakdown in terms of operating activities, investing activities, financing activities, and the cash position of the company, which again tells you the story, 35 billion here, and right now we're sitting at uh, 6.7 in terms of the cash of the company. But uh, the net income has been increasing as we examined, and uh, if you exclude this stock-based compensation, which will happen in many, especially tech companies, and depreciation and amortization, you have increasing free cash flow as well. 4 billion, 3 billion, again, this was um, years that were not great, but after that 6.4, a little bit of a decrease here, but then again 8.6 in uh, 2021. Alright, things are looking pretty nice for the company, 
Let's take a look at the stock evaluation tool though, because nice is not enough. It has to be nice and cheap in order for us to buy. So the revenue year over year over year growth, you're looking at it here. And you can you can be actually a little bit confused by seeing like 42, 20, but you can't be using this insanely high values, of course, for the next five years, because these are these are five year projections here. And so the five year average has been nine. So thus we're gonna be using six, eight, and nine here. And um, the net income margins 10, they had a, a, a negative year. We know that 2018 was a bad year for them. But after that, uh, we're looking at net income uh, margins here that are 22, 20%. So I think I'm going to go, the five year average is 12, but it's because of this value. For the most part, it's near 20. So I'm going to go 18, 20, and 22. Free cash flow margin, uh, again, I'd say it's mostly around 80, 90, and 100 for the most part on average. And this is what I'm going to be using. And an annual return of 13%. Again, this, all these values are pretty much tentative. They can change, can, change, can change according to the will of a person who is actually examining the tool and examining the company. And so you can have your own projections. And again, Monday, if you, are, uh, if you want to get access to the tool, you should be able and you will be able to uh, do all sorts of projections for all sorts of companies using the tool. So... 13% is what I typically I use here. Uh, of course, you can use your own annual return. I like 13% because it's more than 10, which I can get from an S&P 500 ETF annually. So I want to be making more out of a single stock. Of course, there's more risk. 13% I think fits well. And so this is what I use. Calculate. Sometimes I may want to use 15% if the company is more risky. Now, as you see here, based on these uh, projections, uh, the company is still a little bit uh, overvalued. Now, the projections that I've used are a little bit, um, um, I'd say, careful. Because, uh, yeah, the company has been doing nice 9% on, uh, on a five-year average. So I think this one is probably the one that makes a little bit more sense. And so maybe this one should be the conservative one. I'm going to do that just for the sake of the exercise. 9, 12, and 15 is what I'm going to go. Which may actually make a little bit more sense. But typically, I like to be a little bit more conservative. P more than likely, I would probably use these values and try to get the company at around 110, maybe 100 if possible. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to have a little bit of an extra discount here. Yet if you are actually willing to accept this kind of revenue growth, let hi let's hit calculate now. You will see that we are actually good to go for our high estimates and almost good to go for our medium estimates. Again, about maybe 120. So I think this may be a little, a little bit aggressive, but uh, I think uh, that uh, it would make a ton of sense to buy the company maybe near 115, 120. I think that would be my sweet spot for Qualcomm. I like the company a lot, but again, I want to be having some margin of safety. And also, I don't want to go astray with the calculations that I'm making here for my projections, uh, because there are, there are better companies in terms of what I can make out of them. Now, this again, this is a great company. It doesn't mean that it's a bad company, not at all. We're talking about the stock around now. I, this is not the, the company. We examine the company. This is the stock. So we are, we are examining the stock in comparison to what the company is doing. And uh, when, you, when you do that, this is a little bit, just a little bit overvalued, a little bit, but close to it. So tell me what you think about Qualcomm. Are you buying the company? What are you doing with it? And uh, yeah, please remember to leave a like. That helps a lot. And subscribe. And uh, again, have an awesome uh, weekend. And you may also want to take a look at uh, this video that I made uh, a few days ago. And in this one, I'm discussing Salesforce and how they are doing financially. And thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.